How's it going, guys? Matthew here with the Jio Nation. I, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this guy here. <laughs> what a crazy situation in the States, eh? Just crazy. <clears throat> if this is your first time watching this video, my name is Matt. I am an uh, expat, American expat that's living in China. been here for about 10 years. In doing so, I've, I've been able to, like, sort of get my foot grounded in, in both countries and develop a little bit of an uh, appreciation for both. Um, I've also traveled extensively around Asia and Europe and different places. And so traveling is a great uh, educator and uh, you learn a lot as you travel around the world. Currently, I'm in Ningbo, uh, a city south of Shanghai. And um, today is October 5th. As I record this, um, I have to say that because it seems like things just tend to happen at, at, at a breakneck speed. And uh, currently, Donald Trump is in the hospital. Um, I wish he would have worn these things that uh, I'm wearing right now. Uh, he seems very energetic about making them. And in doing so, he's earned a unique... Um, moniker here in uh, China. Maybe moniker? Well, he's definitely uh, at the top of the list. I'm, I'm going to take it off. I'm in my house. And to be honest, I don't need masks here. We don't need masks uh, in China where I'm living uh, or, or pretty much anywhere. There are spots that open up from time to time, but uh, for the most part, the virus is under control. Um, under control for such a long time, and by under control, I mean eradicated from certain spots. It hasn't, uh, it hasn't lifted its head here in Ningbo for months, and um, not that we aren't prepared to put the masks on and do the social distancing and do all of these things, but uh, the 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 pleasure and the right and the privilege earned by being able to keep the uh, virus at bay for this long affords us the opportunity to have our kids go to school face-to-face. -face. It has the opportunity for us not to need face masks. And it has the opportunity for us to live somewhat of a normal life. I see no reason why other countries couldn't have done the same. As a matter of fact, uh, most of the other countries, all of the other countries followed after China made its initial move against the virus. So you would think that everybody could kind of like, oh, let's take some notes. Let's take some notes about what's going on. Oh, that was my note taking. Let's take some notes about, about what's going on in China so that if and when this virus uh, that spreads asymptomatically and most likely will spread around the world does spread here, we'll have infrastructure ready and systems in place to prevent it. Some countries did. Some countries did well. America, not so much. But that's not the topic of this discussion. Again, my name is Matt. I'm, I'm talking to you from Ningbo. I'm actually talking to you from a different place. Normally, I'm on my balcony on the other side of my apartment, but uh, I'm in my new office. It's not really an office. It's my daughter's playroom or bedroom. She actually has two playrooms, and I have no office. So <laughs> we, knew, we uh, uh, shuffled some things around, and I inherited her playroom as my office, which is good. Sound-wise, I think it's pretty good. Does it sound echoey? I don't think so. The only problem is I have, I have some toy books and stuff over there. Good books. Good books. Actually, if my family's watching, some of those books are from you. They're about Michigan. Anyways, so I, um, I started this uh, episode with uh, this mask on. And that's kind of the topic of uh, this Jio conversation. Uh, so let's get into it. Um, there are a few different things that I've heard as far as, uh, uh, predictive, um, characters. You have, uh, the groundhog, um, from where is that, uh, Punxsutawney Phil, who, um, once a year, they give him a chance to come out of his burrow at the end of the winter time. And, uh, he can come out and either see his shadow and then get afraid of it, and then run back into his burrow, or stay outside of his burrow. I'm not sure how the tradition started, 
but they used it as a way to predict how much longer winter season is going to go on. How much longer is the snow going to fall? How much longer are we going to have miserably cold weather? Everybody roots for Punxsutawney Phil to stay outside of his burrow and not turn around, because that means summer is going to come a little bit earlier. There's also, also an octopus, I think. There was an octopus that was predicting the winner of the uh, NBA or some Olympic game. Maybe it was the Olympics. Anyways, he would jump out of his little jar and somehow do something octopusy. <laughs> Will that get me banned? I don't know. But he'll do something, and in doing so, one way some somebody's going to win, the other way somebody else is going to win. And apparently he was predicting pretty good for a long time, so much so that he sort of inherited the uh, identity of this uh, uh, forward-thinking uh, 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 octopus. Well, there's a city in, uh, in China. Uh, it's outside of Ningbo, the city I'm at. It's a few hours' drive away. It's, um, it's beyond these buildings over here. That away. Anyways, uh, Iwu. Iwu makes all sorts of trinkets. Um, they have made uh, like your little car flags. They make the uh, toys that your kid normally probably plays with. That stuff you buy at uh, POP. They call it point of purchase. You know, when you go to Toys R Us and you finish buying all the expensive stuff and then you walk out and there's this little thing that ejects bubble gum or little noisemaker or something you wind up and it, you know just you'll end up throwing it away in a few days that stuff mainly is made in iwu or a large percentage of it anyways they also do sort of propaganda not chinese propaganda mind you you know america does propaganda too western countries do you might think of it as political propaganda but it still fits under the title of propaganda they make propaganda for everywhere. 9-11 saw a boom in Iwu as they made the uh, American flag car flags that hooked onto your driver's side, uh, sandwiched between your di driver's side door and the, and the, and the closing uh, opening. And opening, closing, the, oh, the closing part of the door. <laughs> and uh, they made million, millions upon millions of American flags for uh, Americans who felt... Newly invigorated and patriotic um, in the midst of such a tragedy as 9-11. Um, another thing that they do is they make political merchandise. They do it every year, every election. And they have been able to see the volume of political um, junk, basically, Pins, flags, doodads, cups, any of that stuff you see on Donald Trump's website that's like a commemorative coin or something. Um, I would have to say that most of it, unless it's literally being said made in America, was made here in China, and uh, that I, the majority of it was made over in Iwu. Um, my wife is uh, a person who does sourcing and manufacturing here in China, and she requested some mask samples from Iwu, and among the mask samples was this mask sample. And a message came along with it to Annie from her suppliers, who were sort of um, laughing about it. They were saying, looks like Donald Trump's going to win. They have been able to calculate a uh, system to say who is going to win based on how much merchandise is being produced out of the city. And this year, all signs point to Donald Trump. And so they have been kind of assuming, based on the, their past guesses that have been true, like I guess like 100% of the time, they predicted that Trump win in 2016, and they predicted every uh, election previous, since they've been like mass-producing political uh, propaganda merchandise. Um, so they think Donald Trump's going to win. And... Uh, I'm hoping that this is the first year that, uh, that, that, that this prediction goes false. 
I think anybody that watches this channel knows I'm not a big fan of Donald Trump. I, I think he is uh, dangerous. He's actually a, a danger uh, to not only Americans, but uh, the equilibrium that a thriving global economy can survive on. I am not interested in seeing America become weaker. I'm not interested in seeing China become a, a behemoth off the back of Americans' uh, retreat from the global stage. I believe that um, we should all rise together, and a healthy competition between the two of us can help to make sure that we both keep checks and balances on each other. And with uh, America's America first ideology, retreating from the idea of globalism, which I think is a good thing, healthy globalism, um, is a giving carte blanche to China to uh, step into the void left by America and uh, press on forward. Um, I'm not the only one that thinks this. I have a lot of friends here in China, and a lot of them, um, well, not a lot of them, but some of them are very uh, friendly to the idea of Trump being reelected. It's not just the fact that he's buying a ton of uh, merchandise. I find it, uh, on a side, side note, I find it extremely humorous that Donald Trump produces masks with Trump 2020 on them, and he is now in the hospital for COVID because, among other reasons, he wasn't uh, wearing the mask that he produces. I find the irony in that um, heavy. I find the irony in a lot of things going on and the hypocrisy in a lot of things going on as heavy. But uh, anyways... So why does China want Donald Trump to, uh, to, 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 to have a second term? Well, I was sitting around a campfire. I went camping with a friend of mine, Tony, and uh, my family. We went to a, uh, it wasn't even camping, it was, it was glamping. We literally went to a campsite with tents pre-set up and, and, uh, I made a video, actually, that's going to come out in the future about the differences between camping in America and camping in uh, the East here. And um, there are definitely some, some differences. China is, is, is changing to become a bit more Western a little bit. But for the most part, they do things a bit differently. <laughs> and I kind of like the Western way of camping. It's a little bit more of like uh, isolated, you know, your own family surrounding a campfire. And whereas China, it's like, a bunch of families sharing a community uh, event coordinator who is doing all sorts of crazy things. Not quite the rustic camping that I'm used to. But uh, I, I was sitting uh, around um, a table drinking some gin and tonics with my friend Tony, who's Chinese. And we had an interesting conversation. Um, and... It was very candid. It was very open. And if you're interested in hearing the conversation I had with Tony in its entirety, you can join my Patreon. Um, you just search for Jio or go to a link in the description below. And I recorded our entire conversation so you could listen to what we talked about in, in more detail and get his side of the story. I'm not going, I'm, I might be butchering his interpretation or my interpretation of his words. I'm going to do my best. But he said... That in, um, in China, Donald Trump has a name. Now, I always knew that uh, Donald Trump was called Trumpu. Trumpu. Tr Trumpu. Chuan is uh, the first character. Trumpu. Which, if you say it in Chinese enough, Trumpu, Trumpu, Trump, Trump. It sort of sounds like Trump. But um, there's another name that is very commonly used in China with regards to Donald Trump. And it's called Chuan Zhuang Guo. Chuan Zhuang... Chuan Jian Guo. Jian Guo. That's right. Chuan Jian Guo. And uh, Chuan Jian Guo means... Well, Chuan is part of Trump, Trump Po. But Jian Guo means country builder. Literally... If I plugged it into Google, it would say founding of a nation. Why would, why would Chinese people refer to Trump as 
Trump founder of a nation. Why do they care about America being refounded as a nation? That was my first question to my friend Tony. Why would they care if Donald Trump is refounding America? I thought he was referring to the fact that Chinese people think that Donald Trump is fundamentally remaking America. And, Donald, uh, and my friend uh, Tony smiled at me, and he says, no. He's not helping to rebuild America. He is helping to rebuild and, f- and, and grow China. And that's why we want to see him uh, succeed in a second term. I, Trump, my friend Tony wasn't a Trump supporter, but he was saying that, that the people that say uh, Chuan Jianguo refer to Donald Trump as a positive, growing uh, opportunity for, for China. So just get that, guys. Especially you all who think that uh, Donald Trump has given a, a smackdown to China. China's name for Donald Trump is basically a thank you for Donald Trump helping to grow China and give China a stepping stone that did not exist before. One of the things that Tony told me, and it's not something that I've never heard before, is that um, China grows fairly slowly. They push forward policies that aren't built on a four-year timescale of a president to a president. They have a lot more time to work on things, and so their plans for growth are built over a long period of time. But if you're given a stepping stone you're going to step on it. And China is certainly stepping on uh, the opportunity that Chuan Jianguo is giving them. Because Donald Trump is, at every step of the way, helping, him, helping China grow. And Chinese people really appreciate it. I know a few of them here that really do appreciate it. And with every step uh, that... Uh, America steps back, uh, China steps forward. You'd, you'd say, well, well, what kind of steps forward has Donald, Donald Trump's been doing amazing things to uh, punish China in all sorts of ways. Well, um, like it or not, the, I'll give you an example. Paris Climate Accords. It's a group of people, nations that come together and climate policy and try to affect change with regards to climate, which is a huge issue, whether you believe in it or not, it's true. And America said, you know what, I don't want to be the leader at that table anymore. Now, I don't care if you believe in climate change or not. Being the head of a table of world leaders and being the leader of that table earns you credibility. And whether you believe it or not, some of these countries are building Tons of infrastructure related to uh, climate change prevention. And a lot of those policies and decisions are happening at the Paris Climate Accords. So uh, America not only takes a step back, like falling over itself runs away from this group that they were the leader of. China moves into that position they already have a huge infrastructure for making solar panels and all sorts of wind turbines and the industry here in China to build uh, climate change prevention um, goods and services is huge. And with every step back that America takes to try to consolidate things into their own little bubble of, of, of their own economy, the more Amer- uh, China moves in and says, we'll pick up, we'll pick up those pieces. And with every step back, China moves forward. I'll give you another example. Tariffs. I brought that up to Tony. I said, what do you think about these tariffs? Does China feel threatened by them? Have they been doing what Donald Trump has been uh, trying to do? I was trying to play devil's advocate. I think you all know my stance on this. But I wanted to give uh, Tony an opportunity to rebuke this and give me his unvarnished opinion. He says, what a gift And what a hurtful thing to do to Americans. Because as much as Donald Trump says it was a punishing thing to China, it was much more of a punishing thing to the American populace who look forward to buying goods in America at at a rate that is pretty low because China produces stuff at a pretty low cost. And I said, well, you know, uh, 
China's missing out on that market. Those goods that they'd normally send to uh, the United States to buy by the American consumer now, what are they going to do with them? And my friend Tony said, what a great excuse to sell it to our populace in China. You know, I don't think a lot of people understand the, the enormity of the population of China. It's 1.4 billion people. And as 1.4 billion people are emerging out of a, a lower class to middle class, middle class to upper class, and, and these groups that are elevating themselves to new classes, they like to buy stuff. And um, there is no stockpile of stuff that's getting tossed into the ocean. Everything gets used here in China. So if it's not being sold to America, it's being sold here in larger quantities than before. And basically what the tariffs are doing is they're pushing uh, factories to develop domestically and to other international sources. So um, it's sort of like somebody that is streamline kicking in, uh, in a bay and you're kicking towards the shore and you've got a pretty good pace. You're moving in a forward direction and you're doing pretty good. Donald Trump just pushed a large wave your direction, and you're riding that wave an extra distance. You're literally being pushed forward at an uh, aggressive rate. You're helping China become better. You're helping China develop their domestic infrastructure. You're helping China to move forward in these directions that they wouldn't necessarily have moved as quickly as they're doing now. So... Chinese refer to Trump as Chuan Jianguo because he is the, the um, fuse or maybe the match that has lit the fuse on this um, drive forward to push China in a uh, forward direction. And so in all of this bluster uh, that uh, you think, um, if you live in the West, you think that uh, um, America is finally putting the putting the works to uh, the, the Chinese uh, uh, country, it's, it's, it's actually backfiring. And what you're doing is you're actually driving China into more of a leadership role in not only their own country, but in the world beyond America. So as America decides that globalism isn't a good idea, China is in that position where it thinks globalism is a great idea. And... Um, I, th I have a lot of things to say. I'm going to try and keep these kind of, sh uh, this isn't short, but it could go very long. I got a lot to talk on this issue, and uh, I think uh, I have a lineup of a bunch of different topics that I'd like to talk about. I'll do them here, and every so often I'll just um, put out my thoughts on some things. Now, Donald Trump is in, in hospital right now with COVID. That is a topic I would love to discuss further, but again, it doesn't necessarily um, uh, have anything to do with this topic. But China is, a lot of China is very happy with Donald Trump. Uh, China has been thrust forward because of him. Um, and for every step back that the West thinks it's dealt China, it's actually been a uh, two steps forward um, from the perception of a lot of places here. I'm not saying that everybody is, is, has received such glamorous pushes forward. I'm sure that there's companies here in China that have been hurt but, uh, uh, by this, and I'm sure that there's many companies in America that have been hurt by all of these decisions too, in fact, more. Um, and uh, especially the middle class in America that's going to be dealt the blow of having to deal with products that might be a bit more expensive in a time where um, they might have problems with their career, problems with the places that they live, and all sorts of things. So um, one of my favorite phrases, euphemisms, is a rising tide raises all ships. It has been working that way for a long time. America has been using China to make inexpensive goods, and in return, China has been making those inexpensive goods and learning along the way. And uh, I think America... Uh, and, and a lot of the politicians in the West feel slighted that uh, China has been learning all of this time instead of just making all the cheap shit that uh, America has been sending 
th their way. Um, I think that uh, the position that the world is in right now is completely unnecessary and that we should be working more together than we are against each other. But uh, hopefully we can see some change, but I don't see some change coming, even if um, Biden does get the uh, presidency the next. But um, anyways, I'm going to end this rant. Um, I'm going to post this up so that you guys can see it. And uh, yeah, I'm wishing you everybody, everybody well. Um, hopefully we can all get through this and get on the other side of this so that we can look at this objectively in the future. If I'm wrong, I'm sure you're going to tell me. And if you think that I should not be talking about this, Start up your own podcast. Start up your own videos. Give your opinion. I'm not stopping you. So thanks again, guys. Take it easy. If you're interested in hearing more, you can check out my Patreon. I'll upload these earlier to my Patreon so you can see these conversations. Um, I have a bunch of interesting videos coming out of travel, which is my primary focus. Um, but I think that I will infuse a lot more of these dialogue videos um, in, uh, in the near future and uh, intermix, intermix them, pepper them, you might say, into the uh, travel vlogs that I produce. And um, I think that uh, I've come to the realization that part of travel, part of my life is the points of views that I've gained throughout this interesting life of travel. And so uh, maybe I can give you a little bit of an interesting perspective that you might not have thought of previously. And maybe... Um, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, maybe this can give me an opportunity to tell me why. And so I think that the more people that are objectively uh, communicating their ideas, maybe we can bypass some of these rough spots where we're kind of blindly punching at each other, and instead we're listening to each other. So um, listening to Chinese people talk about their uh, feelings towards uh, Chuan Jianguo has been uh, illuminating to me and uh, helps me to understand uh, their point of view. Um, and, and in closing, I think they're wrong. I think that, uh, I think they're right in the aspect that uh, China is, has many open doors because of the uh, running backwards of America away from globalism. But I also see Donald Trump as an existential threat to long-term things that will affect all of us like um, the potential for war, like the potential for uh, accelerated climate change, like the potential for us to all live peacefully and travel among this, this world and grow as a, uh, as a society instead of warring with each other and growing through conflict. I think we can grow through cooperation much quicker. So um, I see the point of view of the idea of Chuan Jian Guo, but I also see the downsides that uh, giving carte blanche to China to grow um, unfettered um, without some sort of decent competitor uh, can do. I think uh, just like in that race, I, I used to swim on a swim team and uh, my best friend used to swim on the swim team with me. And then he went to another another school, and so we would compete with each other, and he would be swimming on a lane farther over, and I'd be swimming here, and I'd always look over at him, and we were friends, so we were never against each other um, personally, but without him competing against me, I would have never been able to achieve the times and the um, um, the the marks and win the races that I did, uh, knowing that my friend was working against me in this race. And uh, knowing that China and America have a rivalry is not a bad thing. It's just that when you don't understand the rivalry, that when things get out of hand. I think maybe the next episode, I'm going to talk about how um, China isn't America, and America isn't China. And you know what? That's okay. And I think that a lot of the problems rely, uh, lie in the fact that the West is so frustrated that China is doing things differently with some successes and trying to cram China into this square peg uh, when, they're around, uh, when they have a round hole. And that's a real big problem, a lack of understanding 
uh, that, that we're both different, and in those differences, we can succeed together. Anyways, take it easy, guys. Jayo, look for the next episode. I think we'll have a, a, another episode coming up really soon of travel where I'm going into a uh, ghost city in China with a friend of mine named Jim taking pictures and, uh, and really, really interesting video. Might have come out already. I'm not sure how I'm going to pace these things, but take it easy. Jayo, have a good one. Stay safe. Wear your mask if you're in a country that you have to wear a mask in. And if you're in China... Just do your thing. Take it easy, guys. Bye-bye.